Hello, my name is Lars Gustafsson. I'm the creative director for Battlefield here at DICE in sunny Stockholm, Sweden. When it comes to Battlefield 3, uh, we're extremely proud as a studio and it, it, it became probably a bigger success than we had hoped uh, that it would be. Uh, so there were a lot of things that we learned, how to tell a story, how to, to make epic moments and all of that. But somewhere in the mix, we felt ourselves that we missed out on, on kind of player autonomy, player freedom of, of choosing how to solve a problem. So that was one of the key things that we kind of uh, put up on the board when we started to think about what will Battlefield 4 be. Uh, so that's why we are we're doing a couple of things. We're inducing elements from multiplayer, you could argue. So as you saw in the demo yesterday, we have uh, much more open areas where you get to choose what weapon, what gadget, what vehicle, to use destruction, alternate routes, and all of these things that let you be the star and not only have a weapon handed to you and press the button. Uh, as well as we want to, to tell an engaging story, uh, which means that, for example, when you were cutting the leg of your friend to save him, that's something we want everyone to experience. But we really focus on easing you into the moment so that it's player-initiated and not the hand of God suddenly take control over you. So overall, I think we learned a lot, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy with where we're heading. Yeah, so for example, when we were to do this demo, we actually thought about how do you, in front of 500 people, explain that you have the freedom of attacking it in any way. Uh, so we consider even stupid things like, should we do it as a football game referee, you know? Oh, he's attacking on the left front. You can see how defenders are moving around here. Now let's rewind and do a different tactic. But in the end, we chose to, to focus on showing live code and then more talk about the elements that you could see in there. So for example, you could see you had your vehicle that you could jump in, jump out of and use to your disposal. You could direct the fire of your squad, even the fire of the helicopter. Uh, and then use the tools you find on the battlefield and start building up kind of your, your toolbox. And as well, distraction for, for alternate routes. So uh, basically, if we had had the time, we could have played it in numerous ways and you would have created kind of your your experience on that battlefield. And that's what we've always been known for in multiplayer. It's kind of, we're, we are not the stars. Uh, it's you guys who are the stars who play the game and create those moments that you can talk about later. Uh, what we, battlefield moments are only in battlefield. And hopefully this will create a lot of buzz around, or overall, it's not even the buzz. We want the gamer to have a good time and feel that I did this, the game didn't do it for me. So uh, that's one of the big changes in Frostbite 3, where uh, we definitely work with uh, the enemies so that uh, the, the, yeah, you as a player can be the star and they adapt accordingly and put up a good fight uh, and make it believable. Since we have the motto of, of a human, dramatic and, and believable, they need to react in, in believable ways and, and depending on how you play, they should act accordingly. Uh, and then with different uh, enemy types and all of that, it needs to be a good, readable battlefield so you get to do to, to, yeah, good indications to do the right thing. For us, what we talk about here and now is really that we have built the Frostbite 3 engine uh, to be totally scalable. Uh, what you saw yesterday was a high-end PC, uh, but uh, we build the engine in a way that it can scale to the current platform so that it will uh, run well on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Uh, and as we've both improved it uh, from a technical perspective, uh, we've done optimizations, improvements, for example, the HUD elements so that it takes less performance. We can cram more out of those old boxes. Uh, and we also learned a lot on the way uh, in how to make the game look better, play better. 
Um, so that is really what we're focusing on right now. Look good and 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 uh, better AI is two good things. W part of going back to the whole kind of connection to the characters is one of the things that, uh, since we wanted to tell a good story last time, the story sometimes got a bit hard to relate to since you were jumping in between characters, and it was very much about the politics of the big world. And for us who don't, who are not dealing with the big world uh, on a daily basis, that can be hard to relate to. So this time around, you play as one character in a smaller group, and the world is the backdrop to the events that happen to the group. So it's easier for you, me, and everyone to relate to kind of the conflicts within the group. We also put a lot of emphasis on you being part of, of the group. In Battlefield 3, many times they didn't really notice that you were there, and hopefully you saw that that they're more aware of you, and you can connect and bond with them. So, a lot of the technical advancements it's really to remove the barriers for you to think about them as digital actors and just care about the interaction with them and where it's going to lead. There's been uh, numerous improvements that allow us to do that, and another one is uh, if you think about this, uh, when you came up over the hill and saw the whole construction site and the buildings, and it's also building that bigger, more dynamic battlefield with everything from wind, forces, destruction, cloth, that it all becomes one coherent experience, uh, which we couldn't really do before, and definitely not to this extent. And since we're extremely proud of the interactive battlefield, that it is one sandbox, and if you shoot at something, it should react and it should be, uh, it should feel at least perceived realistic and, and physical. Uh, and now we push the boundaries even even further. And there's there's plenty more that I can't talk about today. <laughs> What we've been inspired by is in the multiplayer, all through the years, you've been able to, to spot enemies and basically tell your team that here's a tank, here's an enemy, I, I need help. And by, by giving the same power to you in directing your squad, if they can't see the enemy and the enemy goes into hiding, they will at least lay down suppressive fire, while if they do either eat up the cover, they destroy the cover, they will try to take them out. And as you saw here as well, you, even when you directed a bigger audience and, or uh, crowd and you had support from the helicopter, uh, that one took part in the engagement as well. So we, we will talk more about it down the road and we're still building the game to see how far we can take it. We've chosen to focus on single player and multiplayer. Uh, the motto from the beginning was, as, you, uh, as we talked about before, we want to make a solid battlefield single player experience. And we're extremely proud of our multiplayer and we want to keep on pushing the boundaries. And within our multiplayer, to be honest, we have so many team play elements that allow for you and your friends to play together many times in many modes in an, in an experience that is quite similar to a co-op experience. We think that let's do that really well instead of stretching ourselves too thin. Uh, that's been our mindset. the battlefield elements that we put you as the, the, uh, the main actor of single player. That, that's what I'm most proud of. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.